I'm back at it with my toroid transformer just for something different here. Now this puppy here is a standard uh, step down transformer wired in reverse. Um, I've got the specs on it somewhere I'll get you guys but I've custom wound it with um, two windings one clockwise one counterclockwise respectively for the two inductors and as you can see hooked up right there now I want to show you guys the amperage and voltage I'm going to be running through this cell this is a representation of the amperage going into my actual transformer the actual consumption let's say from the wall outlet as opposed to these being the consumption and voltage just of the cells themselves today I'm pulsing at 3.87 kilohertz at 55 percent duty cycle this never gets old eruption all my cells very nice production this is Stan's Revenge I have a hundred and thirty eight volts across the cell 430 milliamps being consumed this is just the cell but my actual circuit and transformer is consuming 180 watts. All of that mess over there. This waveform, pretty interesting waveform. I'm going to take it back down to zero. You can see that voltage in the cell slowly dying down. Got about 25 volts in the cell still. Um, as we turn this baby on, we can see waveform here. Uh, 5 volts right there going up to uh, 10 volts right there there's 15 and you can see that negative polarity during the off period there starting to uh, spike and that's 24 volts right there and there's uh, 29 volts Pretty interesting uh, waveform. The yellow is our pulse on time. The purple is our 12 volt rail. Interesting spike there, but get excellent production with this transformer. Excellent production. But uh, 180 watts to produce a tenth of a milliliter a minute certainly isn't anywhere near traditional electrolysis, meaning it's consuming a lot more power in the circuit than what is traditionally available just by DC electrolysis. The founding point, however, is that as we push voltage upward, an increase in production is made, gas production, but still only 400 milliamps being consumed. Let's do a, uh, some math real quick. So let's say we're making gas at 500 milliamps to keep it easy, and we're creating one tenth of a milliliter per minute. That means it would take five amps, five amps to create one liter per minute. That being said, that is well under the um, amount of energy required for DC electrolysis to create one liter of, let's say, hydrogen at traditional electrolysis, you would need 30 amps something of that nature um, so amperage definitely is uh, mathematically much lower now if we take that to the other level where I'm considering uh, consuming 180 watts to create this actually circuit input power uh, we would multiply that by 10 and we would get 1800 
watts of consumed power to create one liter of hydrogen per minute. That's still about four to five times more power required for my system to operate versus a traditional DC electrolysis cell. And here's the math that gets me. If we are consuming 180 watts, but we only have 70 watts available at the cell, that is 140 volts times 0.5 amps, that's uh, only 40% efficiency. So, what can we do to increase that efficiency? Also, what can we do to get voltage higher at the cells? Higher voltage will translate into more production. And we've seen that from just, you know, 100 volts, 120 volts to 140 volts, the dynamic, the very uh, substantial difference in production it is from just, you know, 20 to 40 volts across these cells, which equates to no more than one volt per tube increase. Because if we have 36 individual tubes and the production from 100 volts to 140 volts is an extreme amount, that's a lot of production for just a single volt difference in between those cells. That's something to think about. Here, we'll do this here. We're going to take the system up to 100 volts at the cell. Do, 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 ne, ne. Pretty close. About 100 volts right there. Only consuming... 50 milliamps at 100 volts. So apparently, amperage consumption also skyrockets over 100 volts. Because right now, we only have, you know, 12 volts in at less than an amp. But look at the production. Nothing much. So at 100 volts, we, we have production, but it's very uh, limited. Very limited. So, I mean, watch what happens when we take this from 100 volts to 140. Here we go. I mean, it starts just jetting off there. Quite a bit. So yeah, 140 volts. We're now at 440 milliamps. And we are now at that 100 mark. Watch how amperage across the cell grows from 100 volts onwards. Hundred milliamps, one ten. One twenty is two hundred milliamps. One thirty, we have three hundred, a little over that. So that's about one hundred milliamps. For every 10 volts over 100. There's uh, right here 100 volts across the cell. Consumption very low. Hundred forty volts across the cell consumption. Hundred twenty volts across the cell. Hundred ten volts across the cell. Hundred volts.
down to 50 milliamps across the cell. I think we're going to wrap this baby up with more of these inductor windings, double, triple, maybe quadruple. Let's see what we can uh, do with increasing the uh, inductance. That's about all I got for today. I'm going to leave you with this. Let's go. This is Stan's Revenge.